The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman here on this Monday, the 18th of April. This is Boston Marathon Day. It's going to be jam-packed all over the show, and it's actually a beautiful day, a little chilly. And what we're looking at in the Dow, the futures are down 39 points at 34,113. I'm doing the show early today. I won't be able to do it at 10 o'clock, so I said I'll do it at 8. We'll record it and replay it at 10, so I'm going to give you the futures. Uh, by the time we get it to 10 o'clock, half an hour after the trading has begun officially, uh, we don't know where the prices will be. But meantime, what I'm looking at is that this pattern here, let me just show you while we're doing this. I did my webinar last week on Wednesday. It's still available. Everything there is still cogent. It's just uh, everything's active. All the patterns of this pattern we've been talking about, it's it's a rising trend line. Start coming down, make a, a trend line that's declining, that's really looking like a, an, an expanding cone formation, like a V-shaped pattern. I call it the falling axe because it's got the handle, it's got the blade right there. What happens is prices keep coming down. Look, there it is. You go up to peak A, there's the Dow Futures. The Dow actually went to a D. Futures, Dow Futures went to an E. Little doji candle, turn around, and it pulls back, holds the 200-period moving average, and then it attempts to make some kind of a base. If at any point it cannot just go above that trend line as it did on Thursday, but start to close above it, it can quickly go to each higher uh, level that we've got on the, on the left side where the turnaround was, going all the way to the previous high. So that's really important. That's the futures. I'll just show you the Dow uh, closing prices, the Dow cash index, which is obviously not open till 9.30. Ugly candle. It's a Chapman Wave a Roman candle upside down, a very small one. And that says at any point, if the Dow starts to trade for an hour and a half in the 120-minute chart, about 34,770, there's a real good chance it'll try to test the high that was made on Thursday, which was fabulous. Oh, 34,889. I'd say let's see if we can, in the next couple of days, get to the 34,900s, 35,000 level. Well, it did it, and then whoosh, just turned around and failed. It was not very pretty. But the Dow is still one of the stronger indices because of the mix of the Dow. Uh, we're going to see what, happen, what happens in the next two days. Really important. It tries to not just test the high of this uh, trend line right, right here, which was really, that was the opening price on uh, Thursday, which is at 34,628. We're way below that, we're almost 200 points below that. We want to see a move up in the next couple of days. That's not to say everything's hunky dory. It is not. But the fact is that when you consider all the negativity, I, I'm kind of impressed with the way the market is holding. If you look at the E-mini, this is, I'm going to go to the futures right now. The E-mini, this is a continuous contract down 13 at uh, 43.74. This is not nearly as uh, a pretty a picture as the Dow. In fact, it's, it's, a, it's um, there we go. We went down to a leg D in the troughs to the downside. There's a leg D. And we made a peak D in the futures at um, right here. And funny how all these, you know, I've decided I'd keep some of these Fibonacci numbers in, in place here, although I find it tends to be a little messy. But I... I I use them, so I may as well just keep them there. Um, the 463100 round number, high of the 29th of March. Today's low is uh, 43, if I can just move this a little bit, 4355.50. And now it's trying to test the 200 period moving average. It's under it, it needs to go above it. I just can tell you this, we're talking about the futures, but let me go to the S&P cash because of the time this is replayed. This is a broadcast at 8.10 uh, this morning. This will be 10.10 10 when it's rebroadcast uh, at my usual time, at 10 o'clock for the Tiger Technician's Hour. Look at this. Um, that was an ugly candle uh, on, on Thursday, and now we're technically in the futures under it. But what's really important is by Tuesday or Wednesday, 
there needs to at least be a touch. It doesn't even have to be a close, a touch of the 4486 level. I mean, that's almost 90 points above this. Uh, I, that's going to be a tough order. But there's a chance that at least we can get to uh, 4412, 4416 in the next two days, and that's going to be important. I don't want to see a breakdown below 4382. That'll be not good. Let's go to the QQQ and the X100. It is Monday. It is the beginning of the week. It is a very early edition. So I'm going to give you all the numbers that I'm looking at. Now, the Qs are down $1.71 at 336.72. They've not been performing very well at all. And that's why I'm saying that this is a mixed market and the, the, the uh, not a bifurcated market. It's already a trifurcated market. Some of the oldies are trying to, uh, the old winners are trying to bounce off big, big declines, especially in the index 100. Uh, what we're looking at is there's a certain level of um, buying that's coming in, but not enough to make this a leader as it had been. And I think the Qs are still going to be lagging for a while. The most important focus is for us because we're still long the Dow is, is the Dow itself. So the QQQ at uh, 338. Wow, if it starts to break under 336, that's not very good at all. So 335. It's at 336.64 right now. I just want to have a quick look at Bank of America. The earnings should have been out. Maybe they are out because there are 51 cents at 38.08. We were long from 31 way back. Uh, we took profits all the way to hit 50.11, double top, one of those perfect double tops within a couple of cents of the previous high. Uh, but we got out. I think our best, best position getting out was in the 47s, and it's now down at 37. Uh, 37, uh, 57 for a close on Thursday, hit 37.42, and now it's trying to bounce up 52 cents at 38.09. The reason why I think that the bank stocks, although a lot of people are talking about bank stocks are going to do really well because in this environment, blah, blah, blah. I'm just telling you, if the, the, the interest rates, if the TLT, which is the Lehman 20 year Treasury bond fund, is down 60 cents yet again today, making a lower low, at 120.15, all I can say is if the banks didn't rally in the last six weeks beautifully to the upside when rates were screaming to the upside, I, I, I don't know. I, I think the banks are in a little bit of trouble here, and that's why we got out of it completely. We can always get back in. So just going to the TLT at this particular point, look at this. This is bonds. This is the um, continuous contract of the 30-year Treasury bond fund, uh, treasury bond itself, 30 T bonds. And what we're looking at is making a lower low today. So you see this down channel? Well, the down channel says it's a little different to the TLT. The TLT has already pierced the down channel chapter wave inside track support area. But the bonds and the bonds really are the core, the bonds, that's the root, the actual bond contract itself. Down again, 25, 30 seconds at 140 and 9, 30 seconds. This is a real, this is a big issue. And it's saying that the pattern that we were looking at in the monthly chart with the pattern, dreaded H pattern, let me just do this quickly for there are a lot of people. Oh, man, we are just, there's so many people now joining the TFNN uh, group. It's just fabulous. So what we're looking at here is, this pattern, the dreaded H, when you try to rally, it comes down sharp, it tries to rally, breaks that left side low. You can even have a one-to-one -one to the downside of the arch failure pattern. So look at that monthly chart. Close thumb. 49, 30 seconds. Okay, nine. It's not a good sign. I'll be back. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. I'm Ron Basil Chapman. Earlier this 18 a.m. Eastern Time this morning. It will be replayed again at 10 o'clock. Um, a couple of questions. Let me just do this because I think it is a relevant question. I'll go back to the bonds because a lot of people have just sent in some uh, questions about the bonds. Look at this, Titan Machinery and Agri and Const Agriculture and Construction Equipment Stores, also rentals, uh, made a peak A, B, C, a peak in the 120 minute chart. It's at a tremendous, it's almost looking like a double top. There's almost like a, a head and shoulders pattern uh, in the weekly chart, even the monthly chart. But the, the daily is suggesting, this is an A minus, it did show that for a moment that it looked very good and then it failed at about the 35 level and tumbled down to the 24s, it's trading right now at 25.90. And the question here says, uh, is it possible, is this a good opportunity right here to add to this position, T-I-T-N is a symbol at 25.90? Because it's attempting after this Eiffel Tower straight up, in fact, I can't even, I have to take that plus sign away. That was a complete miss in this particular pattern. That was a plus sign. But And then the stochastic, remember, I don't like it when the stochastic goes very briefly, five or six bars uh, above a, a, the 80% level and then fails. That says, watch out below. And it's exactly what happened here. But if you've already got a position, if you're in a winning position, if you're in a losing position, I'm just going to say, no, no, no. Let it let it prove itself. No doji candle on Thursday, but it needs to prove itself by one close this week, even if it's just one close above the 14 period moving average of 26.65. That's only 70 cents above, but that might be tough right now. Um, that's what you want to see. If you're in a winning position, even if it's by pennies, I'm going to say, if it's by pennies, I would prefer that you add on it with strength rather than weakness, because it could make a little H pattern and fail and retest the 24s again. But if you're in more than a dollar gain, that means you picked the, the bottom three, four days ago perfectly, then I'm going to say, that's perfect because now I would add a trading position. I would actually wait until 9.32, give it about two, three minutes. If it moves up, that's okay. You can just have a price in place. But if it moves down, I have to say, hold on. If it's down more than 25 cents, I, I would just say no, nothing to do. But if it within 9.30 a.m. is the opening Eastern time, 
If by 9.35, 9.37, it is not just holding well, but it's actually trying to rally, that's when I would add that position. And that's now your trading position. Try to keep the core. Well, it's going to tell you whether you're going to keep the core. I don't know what your stop is. I'd probably say uh, at this point, if you're in lower down, you have about an 80 cent gain, make your stop. Uh, either break even or give it 60 cents below that entry point. But if you're adding to it, once you add to it, then you you don't want two losing positions. Then immediately I would make my stop on the initial position, at least just a little bit of a gain to say, hey, it was a reward for at least getting in. But mostly if you're in, the trading position says, if it can trade at all in the 2630s after you got in, that's really good action and then have a have a kind of a trading stop on your initial not your core position that's in already this is now your trading position this is the one you hope you get in and your stop which is a fairly tight stop because it's your second position that's the one that you hope actually starts to move and you don't have to worry anymore about your core position because this is the one that's the active position so yes if you got in lower down, you got a bit of a profit that you can use as a cushion. No, if you haven't, you're in a losing. You don't want two losing positions. This has to prove itself. And yes, if you're, um, you have to wait for the opening bell. If the opening bell actually pops 35 cents, have a little patience. Let it pull back a little bit. And as, as long as it's showing a gain that wants to hold, then I would add that trading position and treat it only as a trading position. With very, I know you do, but with strict rules. Now, what you really want to see is the high that was made on Friday, on Thursday, that is, because that was our last trading day, on the 14th at 26.37. You'd love for that to be taken out today and for it to close nicely above the 25.90 close on Thursday. Hope that helps you. Next question was the TLT. Could I do an analysis of the TLT, a continued analysis? I didn't finish because what I wanted to do was the TBT. Now, remember, I talk about trend lines. I talk about up channels. I talk about Chapwave inside track repellent becoming a propellant zone. Well, look how strong this is. The TBT is the ultra short Lehman 20 year Treasury bond ETF trading at 24.59 pre-market up 19 cents most importantly the manner in which the last two weeks we've closed very strongly above the high of 22.60 made on the 16th of march of 2021 in this fabulous cup formation in a chapter wave left side right side price time match it went and got in an earlier in an earlier posture most importantly the MACD in the weekly chart is very strong. The stochastic's fabulous at 86. But my on-balance volume, this blue line says, be careful because the yields are saying we are very close. It doesn't tell you how much, but very close to at least a bit of a digestive phase. And the pattern that I said you've got to keep in mind was, is there a chance, A, B, B, V, is there a chance <coughs> that every MV is Abbott Labs, Spinoff Pharma, uh, they have Lupron, Humina, um, they bought Aloran, it's Botox. So they, this, is, this is the pattern, forget what they do. It's just that the pattern says, <clears throat> this is a beautiful up channel because it stayed in the channel, then broke sharply above the Chapman Wave inside track, repellent zone, but it did it only for three bars and the fourth bar, boom, it goes down goes underneath and now it's going to test the midpoint and that's what I was saying is this what's going to happen in the TBT that we're going to now become really volatile in yields <clears throat> the yields will come down but basically what they're going to do I'm going to do this I might be very foolish but that's the way I always do things right here I'll do this and say is there a chance that over the next three weeks we've got a big a wide trading range in bonds as they try to establish some kind of a roof in the yields and a base in the TLT, which is doing the exact opposite, breaking out to the downside. And now it's going to have a very choppy move, basically centering about around the 123.70 to 124.40 area over the next three weeks. I don't know, but that's the pattern I'm looking at. So the question is, if I'm in the TBT, some people ask me, if we still in the, I have a position still long in the TBT, money management just says to me, 
Yields are going higher because of the monthly chart leg C. It should still go to a D in a buy mode in the Chapman Wave methodology. This is yields. But on a short term basis, I would be taking a little bit of money off. I don't I wouldn't get too carried away. I wouldn't get out of the full position, but I'd do money management and say, hey, this is fan this is unbelievable. The move that we've just seen, we saw it a long time ago, back in the move from 2020, around about July or so, to the high of early 2021. And now we've done almost a comparable move to the upside in a shorter time span with bigger moves, just money management. But in the bigger picture, in the bigger picture, and that's the reason why I think I'm, I'm a bit worried about the XLF, the financials, it seems to me, have not taken this as, as a, a kind of a, a, an impetus to keep moving higher. In fact, they digest. I think there are other problems that the financials are in. It's kind of two separate things. So yes, to take a little bit of money off in the T TBT, do you start a position in the TLT? Can I get back with you? Uh, Earlier this year, Basel Trap, Tiger Dignity. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den trading room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8:30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Chart allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Let's continue. So, uh, questions have come in about um, gold. Yes, gold is moving. One of the reasons why, for subscribers to my opening call, we've been adding to our gold position is um, gold starting to break out. Remember, I said rectangle formation. What's really important here is you get an inverse head and shoulders pattern. Not my favorite pattern, but I use it with other things. If I use it with the Chapman Wave inside, it was inside wedge target resistance line. And that is right here. If I just make that a little bit clearer, dash line, this green dash line. Um, it's hit the line right now. Yep. 
I, I showed in my webinar on Wednesday night how we can draw these things. And that says that by the first level that I would look for, since it's moving to the upside here, would be March the 10th, the high of 2020, round number. <clears throat> uh, that was that candle. And that says 2020, it's at 1998. If it's going to get there, it needs to do something. Let me just do this here because there are, and I can move that to the right. Remember, the, the, the plumb line, which is just a fabulous technique, it doesn't always work. Look, the plumb line would have been the low of the 29th of March, going from the left side to the right side in the same number of bars to the right as it was to the left. But I don't do that. What I do is I go step by step. And if the plumb line doesn't fit, it would have. It could even do, be today. But I, I got a feeling it's going to be moving to the right. I move the candle. The plumb line is not the low. It has to be visual. And this is why when you're doing it, um, if you are trying to digitize it, if you're trying to use a methodology that uses uh, the math, you got to use it just visually it takes me one not even a second a split second to say whoops you can't do that it's already moving to the right it's taking too long find another plumb line and that's the flexible plumb line that says i'm taking the high of the 31st and that takes me out to a measured move right here a measured move to um, either the 20th or the 21st of this of this week uh, that'll be uh, around about Thursday. And it says by Thursday, there should be an attempt to try to get to 2020 based on this because that's the magnetic. Now it's, it's, it's pulling, attracting the price up, but it's also the repellent zone. Uh, so we'll see what happens. The MACD's turned up. It's not anywhere as strong as it was before. And the big move up to the high of the 8th of March, 2083.30. Uh, then maybe that's changed. And the stochastic's fabulous at 92%. The on balance volume isn't overbought. It is getting overboard in the weekly chart, uh, so that, we, that we're going to follow closely. But back at the ranch, we're doing the daily chart. Good move. It says 1987 to 1985 should be support, and it's almost at the high. It's up 24.5 today. I like this action, and that's the reason why I said think of gold. This is my own thinking. I don't know if this is the universe. It's just my own thinking that gold is, is the yellow fear factor it is the golden the golden icon that says when there's geopolitical uncertainty and economic uncertainty money tends to flow in the countries in big numbers not just you and i or anybody else it's in the big numbers that says ha huh, we want to have gold and that's really what we're looking at here silver's a little bit look silver uh, silver's moving up very nicely here the pattern itself is a little bit different but in fact, what I am expecting is that silver is going to not only play catch up, but what it often does, suddenly the pattern looks even more intriguing, even better than the uh, than the day. Look at this. This is only a leg B, and it's already broken above the previous highs. And that's just saying that if I was using a left side, right side price time, I don't know if I want to do that right now. There's so many questions that have come in. Uh, just let me say that this pattern is extremely bullish now. It wasn't looking like that just the other day. And yeah, that's what happens with silver. And when when silver catches up and then leads gold in the pattern I'm talking about, that's when you've got to be careful. That's when they're both about to pull back. Right now we're in the catch up phase. Does it go to a leg D in the weekly chart? That'll happen if it goes above the previous high of the about the 8th or so of March. And that means the week of the 11th, it had a high of 27.49. And it's at 26.45 now. It's got about a dollar to go. I, I'd be looking at that and I, oh, I'll do it. I had a question. Could you please just do that? Yes, I'll just do that. So those are the candle bodies there. So I like to be conservative in the beginning. And I'll say if you're using the bodies, and this is your plumb line right here, 29th of March with a low of 24.04. Here we go. Plumb line or no plumb line? Let's see where that takes us. And that takes us to tomorrow. Tomorrow says, can it get into the high of the body that was the open of 26.92 on the 10th of March? And let's see if I can do the left side, right side price time match with the up. There it is. And there it is. There it is. There it is. And it says, there you are. So everything there says that silver, we could have a, a good couple, just a good couple of days. And you've got to be careful. But so far, 
excellent action. Stochastic at 84 daily. MACD is good. Nothing like it was before. But look, the monthly is starting to improve, not just stochastic, but everything else. So, yeah, that's silver. We want to do high-grade copper. High-grade copper is pulling back here. It's at 4.70. It's down 0.02. It's stuck in a range and didn't make a peak D under the previous D. So it says it's going to be stuck for a little while. And we'll see what happens with the copper stocks. This is, these double tops are very intriguing. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on that because we need to get to crude oil. And the next question was, so crude oil is... Acting nicely today, up 39 cents at 106.77. Remember, I said, I think we're going to be trapped between about 107, maybe 108 on the upside, and 90, 97 to 96 on the, no, 98 to 97 on the downside. But you've got the nine period moving average pre market just about to turn up. And the MACD is about to cross over. It is crossing over. Stochastics lagging on balance volume. So it says that crude oil is in play. But now it's just more intraday trading. Talk about that. Let's go to BTC, which I said I'm not impressed with at all. This is the Bitcoin futures. Um, just look at this leg. See, I said stuck in a range. I, I'm not impressed with the action. I think it's going to be a lag. And I think the money is focusing more on gold, first of all, as a trading phenomenon. Uh, at this particular point, because it has some veracity to it, because it has this geopolitical aspect. And just at the moment, Bitcoin is still not catching a bid as some kind of an alternative. So that's what we're looking at. Oh, I forgot. I'm sorry. GDX was the question. Yeah, so GDX, you got the rectangle formation. It went to the, you remember the rule of my large rectangle formation is the price, once it makes a low, if it starts to make higher highs and higher lows, in that left side flag, in this case, the higher 40.26 on the 8th of March, um, if, if you can have a stair-step move in that particular time frame, you could get to a peak D just under, right on or just above the previous sign. Then be careful because there could be a pullback into the body of that, the middle midpoint of that rectangle. Lo and behold, what did it do? Exactly that on the 5th of April. It goes to 39.88. Within a day, it's down to 37.80. Doesn't sound like much, but pattern-wise, it did go underneath for a moment under the 14-period moving average. <clears throat> and now it's at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This could be the seventh candle with higher highs. Inner leg E. I'm not calling it a new A at this point. I'm just saying it's an E. MACD turned positive. Stochastics at 88%, on balance volumes a tad overbought. This is good action. Look at this. this is another left side, right side price tie match with the plumb line move to the right in the weekly chart. This is very good action. The, the monthly chart suggests that 4578, the high of August of 2020, will become the target if this week there's even a touch of 4175. And it's trading, oh, 41 right now. I touch a 170, 4175. We'll see if that's the case. I'll be back in a month, Bowser Chapman, early edition. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value 
or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. Just a question came in about the E-minis, the two-minute chart. Yeah, it made a peak D once from the low that was made back at 5.26 this morning at 43.61.00. Then it went peak A, peak B, peak C1, C2, and then it made the D. Um, then it pulled back to the look this importance of the 200-period exponential moving areas, this pinkish line right here. Then it goes peak A, B, C, D. What's the objective in the Chapman Wave methodology? Is to try to identify the lowest low bar. There it is. And then count each successively higher peak, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. The seven letters in the alphabet that we use on the way up and the way down, on the way up, it's uppercase. At D, other things can happen. That's where you got to do an analysis, raise your foot off the accelerator, hover over the brake. It could have a sharp pullback, or it could continue. If it continues within two or three bars uh, to a new higher high above D, then you get an alternate count. Um, and this is what we're looking at here. Your D gave you the longest pullback, holds the 9 and 14 period moving average just above the 200, screams to a peak D. The unbalanced volume gives you a nice turnaround. The MACD starts to turn down stochastic and it drops very sharply. And where does it go to? Exactly on the 200 period moving average at 8.16 this morning, Eastern Time, 43.70.75. Now comes the attempt by, um, by 9 o'clock. Will there be a test going to a leg C and maybe even a D to retest the high that was made at 7.16 this morning of 43.82.00? That's the way we look at it. And I always say there are always two fighting, at least two fighting patterns. One is on the upside, one is on the downside. And this says if this fails, watch out, you could get a dreaded H with the retest of the 200 period moving average. And then you've got to basically restart your signals all over again. So let's get back to our story here. Um, so I did that, did that. I have done crude oil. Crude oil is done nicely. It's got doji candle. It's up 14 cents. I think this is just about where you should start to see at least some pressure on the upside uh, as resistance for crude oil. But there's tremendous buying support. So it should be stuck in a range. I've done all of that, done all of that. Oh, XLE, yes, yes, good question. XLE is the same as... Go on to a leg E, just as gold, the GDX did. But look at the difference. 80.22, this is my rule of thumb for the large rectangle formation. You can come look, there's a dreaded H pattern. It failed and went down to a low after the 80.22. Is that still the price? Because it's a continuous contract. Yep, 80.22 on the 8th of March. It pulls back down to the 70 level. I think it was 69. So, no, 70.44. And then it goes peak A, peak B. Rising price says that in a big rectangle formation, you can get a lopsided gravy cup formation. 
and it could go back to just under, right on, or just above the previous high, and then be careful of a pullback into the body of the candle, would have went to peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, just under, pulls back, and went to E just over on Thursday, and here it is at 80.31 pre, uh, pre-open. That's higher than the previous high. If it prints the 80.48 was the high on Thursday. Is this where crude energy itself, the energy sector, S&P Select, Energy Spider Fund? Yes, that was a good question. Are we in for a little bit of a pullback? I got a feeling just based on the chart formations using the account. Now I'm keeping so many people have asked me. Yes, I do keep it. I usually use it just as a visual for myself. But here I have the uh, the Fibonacci extension. So the 238 is 82.85 uh, in that area. It could be just a little bit of a miss because I have to I have to pick the actual lows and highs. So I think we're in for just a bit of a digestive phase in this whole energy sector. If that's the case, it's going to be really important because it allows, at least for the medium term, no, no, and short term, I should say, I'm talking about this week, some digestive phase in the energy whole energy sector which says some relief, and that means go straight to JETS. What are JETS doing? JETS is the U.S. Global JETS ETF, right on the 200-period moving average trading at 2167 pre-market. Remember, this is an early edition that's going to be replayed my usual time at 10. I just couldn't make that time, so we do, I'm doing it earlier for rebroadcast at 8.46 a.m. right now. 200-period moving average right there. What is the price of the 200-period moving average? It is... 21.84. What's the price right now? 21.67, down nine cents from Thursday's close. There's the Chapman falling X. I drew this, drew this nice and big. Why? Is this the opportunity that the market is going to take? I can tell you, uh, Logan, uh, Logan Airport's just been chock a block. I actually have to get there um, uh, a little later today. I hope with the, with the traffic and everything on the Boston Marathon, it's smooth sailing. Um, we'll see what happens. <clears throat> um, we're just looking at this and saying the U.S. Global Jets ETF, considering everything that's gone on, plus weather patterns, plus also think JetBlue messing up completely um, over the last couple of weeks. They were such a great airline, and, and lately it's just been terrible. Um, moving above the 200-period moving average of 18.89, it's at 18 point down 11 cents from Thursday. Whoops, is that a is that a host chat? Uh, um, oh, it's a call for me, but that's the wrong number, at least at the moment. Okay, what we're looking at is uh, Jets is trying to break out of the down channel in the weekly charts. Uh, sorry, American Airlines. Look at this beautiful down channel. It's gone just above. Now, is this the period where we get this another bifurcated or trifurcated move where the Jets, where the airlines are trying to say to us, you know what? With everything that's going on, there are enough people out there that have money that are wanting to uh, travel. I mean, you know, what the, you know what the booking fare is? I mean, prices are really high compared to this time last year. So that's happening. Will we see that uh, rep replicated in the action of, of, of companies that have a lot of outdoor activity? Well, I can't use Disney for that because Disney's involved in so many media things that I, I don't use it. We don't own this right now, but six is a nice benchmark. It's at 41.37, six flares entertainment. But it's also not telling me all that much. Um, Las Vegas is something completely different because a lot of the activities indoors, although I, when you think of Las Vegas 15 years ago to now, uh, is that my, uh, is that my, is there uh, something going on? I hear my uh, earphone going. Um, call.
reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. forget you can listen to tfnn live on your mobile device 24 hours per day go to tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv that's tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv i thought back a recap uh, a question came in about semiconductors you don't seem to talk about them very much and video in particular of course i don't i've been negative semiconductors since it made the high in january um, the 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 November high was retested at 318 a number of times, and I said, "Oh, oh this is not good at all." And uh, here we go on from 318 down to 249, rally up, to fail, come down to 237, rally again up to the 283 level, and then plunge. And today we even underneath. Uh, Pre-market, we've gone underneath the 237.32 low. I don't know if that's the case uh, when we started 9.30 this morning. Don't forget, 9 o'clock, 9.06, comes Tommy O'Brien, and he does a fabulous job with his market kickoff. What a nice way to start off the, off the day and the week with a, with a fundamental and technical look at the markets. And then you've got programming all the rest of the day. So stay tuned. What I wanted to say is I want to see the Dow start to hold uh, minus 30 or so a little later in the morning. It's already done a really great job earlier on, but I want to see that later on. And then I want to see m money filter in to the upside so that we can have a close on the upside because it's really important right now for the Dow to attempt to retest that 34,900 to 35,000 uh, resistance level this week and fairly soon. That's kind of the way I'm looking at it. Uh, for subscribers to my opening call, we are well long, we are long a number of positions, but it's under the radar. So uh, we're trying to avoid the big names, 
that have not been working. So that's the story there. And uh, so we're about to wrap up. This is my show. I'm doing the early edition. Dow futures at this time are down 51. The S&P futures are down 12. Um, they were down much more than that last night. They came back really nicely early on. I didn't like that. It was too early to do that. I wanted a little bit later on. So with that said, uh, a couple of things that are really important. I didn't do anything with the VIX. I'll do it right now. If the VIX trading at uh, 23.92 up a dollar 22 actually starts to pull back, and at 1:32:15 this afternoon Eastern Time, the VIX is actually under 23.30. And the Dow is now better than minus three. Positive. I think that'll give us a nice close. And I hope you for today. Hope there's some good you want to do. <laughs> so have a wonderful day. Stay tuned. Great programming coming up. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going